Every yeah. time I see this game in price, and I'm thinking about what I saw it for, and what it, I could have got it for. It hurts, man. It hurts. It hurts. It hurts. But one day. Channel here from Deep Galaxy, and I am back at really rad weekend now in 2023. I came here last year, walked away with a ton of amazing items, and even scored my 300th GameCube game last year. This year, though, I'm approaching this convention a little differently. I am actually bringing a massive box. There are 50 plus items in this box. I'm going to try to see if I can trade all these towards some banger high end items. Join in, and let's see if I can pull it off. Kicking off the day, I went to Bonfire Games' booth to start off my trade process. Now, Bonfire Games last year had a certain grail item that I really wanted. Now, last year, it was going for about $800, which was way above my price point. Then I saw the Bonfire Games crew back at Southeast Game Exchange. We tried to work out something, but again, it just wasn't feasible on my end at the time. So, I met up with Thomas again at this convention and we had been communicating about potentially seeing if we can make a trade work for this particular game. All right, so Thomas went through the box of games that I brought with me, and he found a nice stack out of that where he felt it was a pretty reasonable amount of value to trade for Cubivore on the GameCube. Like I stated before, this is complete, this is clean, this is a year in the making. Yes, to yeah. convince this is the third, third, third convention, yeah, technically, yeah, yeah. where we made this happen. So, uh, Thomas, thank you so much. Yeah. Appreciate thank you it. so much. I appreciate it. And, guys, if you're in the Tampa area, check out Bonfire Games. Their shop is loaded with a huge variety and inventory of retro games from basically, what, Atari up to today? Yeah. Yeah. So, 97, or 77 to today. But, yeah. So, uh, we're talking about well over 30, 40 years of games. Yeah. Guys, check them out. I know I can't wait to make my way over to the West Coast to check out their shop. So Thomas, thank you again, man. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I'm really psyched about this because the fact that I was able to secure Cubivore in the same year as getting Gotcha Force at Southeast Game Exchange, I just acquired two Grail games in less than a year. So for me, that's some big strides made on my collection. Moving forward, I went around the con checking out other vendors and trying to get an idea of what items they had that I wanted to try to work with them on trading for. Now, at this point, I ran into my good friend Andy, aka Pac-Man Case, in which he had three GameCube games to provide for me. So I'm here with the case, oh, the Pac-Man Case. We've got a few more GameCube games adding to the collection. Now, Andy, these are Grail items, right? The best of the best. The best of the best. So what do we got first? I'm not sure if that's best of the best. I'm hoping something is better than that. <laughs> that may be better. Wait, is that an NBA sticker on it? No. <laughs> Somebody did a case swap. Pac Man case swap. And then, oh, that's another copy. That's another copy of Talk of Rescue Patrol? Pokemon X. Okay, so that's kind of a grail thing. Now, the only thing with this is this is without the game. Which is okay, because I actually have a copy of the disc. Three more, I guess two and a half more. You're adding these. I'm adding them. You're adding them. Especially Tonka. This is, you've been looking for this for a long time. That, that's going to be my god. Forget Resident Evil 4, forget Tears of the Kingdom. Tonka Rescue Patrol. We'll be. <laughs> so, yeah, awesome. Well, Thank you, sir. So now Andy provided me these games, but he didn't realize that in the process as a repayment to him, I actually provided him with one N64 game that I found that he needed for his collection so that he gets closer to his complete N64 set. And if you want to see what it was, well, I'll leave a link in the description down below for the video that he just released showing what the N64 game he got was. As the day progressed, I went to go check out several other booths that were there. 
First off is my good friend Adam, AKA the Retro Beard, who actually provided me with these custom GameCube Galaxy coasters that he made. And more so the fact that he was actually selling them and there was a big fan of the channel who happened to be buying a coaster for himself. Additionally, Adam actually had picked up an item for me that was something that a little bit more obscure that I never saw and actually had some GameCube games to provide for me as well. <laughs> so Adam came across this really cool GameCube slash Game Boy Advance carry case. Um, and those who are aware, you know, the con both consoles came out in 2001, so it's really cool to see that hybrid style of travel pack for this. I've never seen this before. Um, Adam, wh where did you find this? Here in Florida. Yeah, at a secondhand shop somewhere down the road. I forget. It's oh, it's actually in the same area? Yeah, this is down in Elegance. Oh, wow. Yeah, this is, I haven't seen anything. I haven't seen this before. I have even looked on eBay. I can't find anything and on the, this bag. the disc thing on the front that holds the disc, you can actually remove that separate. So a lot of times what oh, wow. I've found is that that's always missing. That's interesting. That's actually really cool. So now apparently there's stuff in here. And we have a stack of games that Adam's giving me for free. <laughs> no, so uh, Adam did have a few to get rid of from his collection and these things I need. So, uh, Powerpuff Girls, Relish, Rampage, the manual, because I have the game with the box with no manual. So now I have that. Um, Over the Hedge, I don't have. Uh, WrestleMania 18, actually, I do have. So, that one. I'll give it back to you, good sir. You can display it, say it's like a bonus. If you buy a game you sign, you get WrestleMania 18 with it. Um, Lord of the Rings Third Age. The game of the year, Mary Kate and Ashley. 316, license to drive. I can't wait to review this one on the channel. <laughs> uh, NFL Quarterback Club 2002. And tie three, Night of the Queen. The only tie game I don't have. You still missing this one too? Yeah. <laughs> so Adam, thank you, dude. Appreciate sure, it. Man. Next up was my good friend Matt, aka Retro Wolf, who was vending at this convention just like he did at Southeast Game Exchange, and he was selling a ton of games that were extremely reasonable, below price charting values, and he was actually getting rid of his entire Wii personal collection. So, going through what he had, there were three Wii games I ended up picking up from his booth at pretty reasonable prices yet again. A few games that came to mind, so Counterforce. This is a game that may look super generic, especially from its cover, but I've heard nothing but great things that it's a hidden gem for the console. And so much so that it actually got a Switch HD remaster. Really? Yeah. I did not, not know that. But it's not called Counterforce. It's yeah. like a different name. Okay. But I came across it. I'm like, wait a minute, wasn't that the Wii game? And sure enough, it is actually deemed a hidden gem. So I'm excited to try this one. Then I love the first Dead Rising. I did not have a 360 growing up. I finally had the opportunity to play the original Dead Rising on the PS4 with that remaster. Um, and the Wii version I'm intrigued about because it uses that RE4 engine that they use for the Wii version, the Wii edition. So that might be kind of fun to toy around with. But here is a game that I've heard is another hidden gem. Okay, so Tornado Outbreak is a game that I've heard great things about. Across the PS3, the 360, the Wii. Uh, Matt here has it for the Wii. And very clean, complete copy. As much as I would have liked this in the PS3, for the PS3 collection, it is 120 bucks on the PS3, which is insane. Yeah. You have to let me know if that game is good, man. Yeah, yeah, I definitely yeah. will, dude. So, yeah. Yeah, and can... uh, I sold you all three of those games for what? All three of these for 15 bucks. I can't say no to that. Killer deal, son. Boom. Boom. All right, so I'm here with Zach, who's a fan of our content. Him Across us, and he was actually very curious to actually have a sign certain games. Now, Zach just started a channel called Grailbound Gaming, which I'm very excited to check out. Zach, first of all, I'm very honored that you even asked for a signature. So I gotta pay you five dollars just so I can sign this. <laughs> Typically, that's how this works. No, it is, it is definitely an honor. I've been watching you guys for years and everything, and it's great to see the growth in nice. your channel and the variety, and even the podcast. Thank I watched the podcast from Friday night, so it is definitely an honor to meet to meet you and to have you have this sign. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank you, dude. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Thank cool. you. Thank All you right. so much for the show. Of course, dude. Nice meeting you. Nice meeting you as well. Thank you. Check out your content. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Additionally, I went to chat with the legendary John Riggs and was able to pick up a copy of Yeah Yeah Beavis 2 for the Dreamcast because that's one I've actually been wanting for a while and I kept meaning to get. And this time I told John, it's happening. I have to get it. Quickly, John. Yes, yes. Yeah Yeah Beavis, how did this come about? It came 
came about by, well, um, there is a lore about Yaya yeah Divas 1. It's lost media. Um, it was listed in the back of magazines. It never came out. It doesn't exist. So I, I made the sequel to the game that doesn't exist. Okay. That's why it's called Yaya yeah yeah Divas 2. Um, no, it just, it just came about as a, like, you know, I've always done game hacks, but I wanted to have my own game um, that I could sell and not have Nintendo knock it on my door with a cease and desist, you know, so. <laughs> Later on that afternoon, myself, alongside Andy and Matt, all had a panel that we were doing at 2 p.m. that day in which we discussed about reliving the sixth generation of consoles. We had all four consoles displayed on the table for everyone to see, and between having a live audience there, as well as live streaming it through Andy's channel, we had a pretty nice, healthy reception to the panel overall. There were trivia questions asked, there were prizes given out for games for those generations for people to win, and honestly, it was a fantastic time with a ton of reception that was just well received Everybody seemed to be enjoying themselves. To wrap up the panel though, was a nice little surprise from Akash, who actually provided me a GameCube game as a gift, which was NFL Street. So Akash, dude, thank you. That was extremely kind of you. And it was awesome hanging out with you this weekend. And I can't thank everyone enough for taking part in the panel that day. Making my way back into the convention hall, it was time I made a few more trades. I went back to Bonfire Games' booth and I worked alongside Dave, who I actually worked with last year in acquiring my 300th GameCube game, which was Mario Party 5. This year, Dave worked with me with a lot of trades, so much so that I actually revisited the booth numerous times throughout the two days at the convention. All right, Dave, so what do we got? Well, so we decided to do a trade. I got Sealed Game Watch Gallo, uh, Gallery with yep. Zelda. And I got a few Switch games here, so. So we got Burger Time Party, we've got... We got Untitled Boost Game and WWE 2K Battlegrounds. So. And for those, I, I was able to trade with him and get this stack. I've got Kirby uh, Canvas Chris Complete for the uh, DS. I got Vex, Scooby-Doo Unmasked, and W... Uh, yeah, WWE WrestleMania 18. 18. So, yeah. yeah. Sounds like we got a good deal. Awesome. Dave, spoke with Dave. Yep. Found a few more items I need. Let and we're, we're gonna see what they are. And I have a few items I'm gonna trade so I can get these as a watch. So, first off is what's considered one of the worst Tomb Raider games, <laughs> Angel of Darkness. <laughs> now, I have a nostalgia for this game, okay? I knew it was terrible, but I still also kind of like it. It's a guilty pleasure game, and I never had it for myself. So, that's complete, but I've had the biggest regret missing out on this back in the day. And I know my brother, when he watches this, is always gonna say, you should have bought it when I told you to, and now I finally am, is the Donkey Kong Amiibo. I have been trying to get this for a reasonable price, because it's gone up quite a bit. This is super clean, and basically the price of this is 35, which is about half of what I usually find it for on eBay. Um, these two combined, uh, two million is five bucks, so it's 40 bucks. Yep. Dave went through my box of games that I brought to try to get rid of. He found two Switch games that he found comparable. Ori in the Blind Forest and Legend of K. Both great games. Yeah. So, and Ori is sealed, which is a nice little perk. We came up with that deal. I feel like that's a fair trade. So, Dave, as always, Pleasure. appreciate it. Yeah, man. Afterwards, I went to go chat with Scott, aka Scott Squash, because he actually had a GameCube exclusive he was selling that I definitely needed in my library. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> All right, I don't need any money for this. Yeah. Okay, so I can't even interest you in trading for some credit down. Excuse me. Twenty percent of value. <laughs> I don't know what we're doing out here. Do I have 60 in cap? Are you serious? Yeah. Are you recording right now, too? I, I do, actually. Alright, so, well, one is the Andy, get over here. And one is yours. Yeah. That one's mine. So, it's yours. It's yours. Thanks, Marcello. This is yours. Thank you. So, Bat and Kylos Origins. So, I now have both Bat and Kylos games, and apparently, is it still better to play in the GameCube than the HD remasters that apparently got messed up? So, yes, this yes. is the way to go. Hey, wait, come here. Yep. And? Afterwards, I went to go check out a booth called Toy Rush, in which they had a ton of different toys over the past few decades, from the 80s up to today, but they actually had a GameCube game there. Now, last year, I worked with this vendor because they actually had Nick Party Blast that I secured a copy of from them. This year, they actually had a fairly complete unboxed copy of Animal Crossing on the GameCube, and while it's missing the memory card, I actually have a copy of that memory card. I was able to snag the game for 20 bucks, which I can't complain about at that price. While they don't have their own store, they always go to this con and they are just an awesome pillar of the community when it comes to providing some quality products for people to pick up and to make deals on. Next up, I went to the Rad Junk booth since they are the ones that hosted the event 
and I was able to strike a deal trading a few more items for a few more games of theirs. Looking to trade with them, Yoku's Island Express, Revere Sweet As Edition that's complete with the yo-yo, and Toki Retro Collector Edition, which is also complete. And in the process, looking at getting Smashing Drive for the Game Boy Advance sealed, Rocky complete and Backyard Sports 2007 complete. And I feel like we came, that was a fair trade. So uh, yeah, walking away with some banger items here. Upon leaving Rad Junk's booth, I went back to my good friends over at Bonfire Games because Dave told me he had received a few more items in inventory due to other trades. And well, there were a few other items that caught my attention. So. All right, Dave, so I keep coming back here because yep. you're the man with the deals. <laughs> okay. All right, so I just gave you Ori. Yes. You told me that, that was, what, not, not 40 minutes ago? Not even? Not even, yeah. That's already gone. Yeah. Someone traded you for it. What did they trade you? Metroid Fusion. So Metroid Fusion for the GBA. And now you want Metroid Fusion. I want Metroid Fusion <laughs> for the GBA. So out of my box, and this is only one of three boxes I have with me okay. to get rid of stuff. Everything here. Well, you're the All right, there we go. It's like following the trade. How far it goes. All right, so we'll just do those two for Metroid. And I throw a town on top. That was the game. I'm good with that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, through more trades, I now have Metroid Fusion for the GBA, which is a phenomenal game. Easily my top five GBA games of all time. Although I still want to get Zero Mission because that's another phenomenal installment. So there we go. I got a proposition for you. I got Zero Mission with the game. All right, so through this like weird yet awesome like <laughs> circle of trades and all that, this kind sir let me know that he actually has a copy of Metroid Zero Mission with the manual, and he was interested actually in Blasphemous Deluxe Edition, and we kind of just made an agreement to do a trade. Right so there you go, good sir. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much. Enjoy. I appreciate you. Now, to wrap up the event, there was one other booth I went to that I struck deals with, and that was Retro Carts and More. This is a childhood favorite of mine. Game & Watch Gallery 2, I have this loose, and I've always wanted a box copy of this for my collection just because of, again, the nostalgia for it. So Andy has it for about 45 bucks, and I showed him my box of games that I'm still trying to get rid of this whole convention, and I've been a little by little getting it. So he came across All in the Dark, the new Nightmare for the Dreamcast. That I had now it doesn't have the manual but okay. the current value of this is about 50 bucks it's pretty much an even swap in my opinion so uh we both agreed on it so it's yep. a good deal so andy thank you my friend oh excellent man. so something yeah. i can actually sell that's i've right. been sitting on that for a while we're doing each other a favor man that's it that's yeah. it now andy your shop you have a shop i don't have a brick and mortar store but okay. i sell predominantly on ebay okay so but, yeah, what's you your can, ebay shop code you can actually go to google type in retro carts and more where the first thing that pops up on the search engine perfect that's, that's awesome yeah. so guys Check out his shop on eBay. His inventory here is staggering to say the least, but I also have to say that it's super clean. So guys, check him out. Now last year's really rad weekend was exactly that, a really rad weekend. This year though, far surpassed that for a variety of reasons. But the most important part of leaving this convention, just like any convention, is the community. Hanging out with a variety of friends, content creators, fans, the community in general is a second to none experience. Things like this are the reasons why we go to conventions. It's not even so much about what you walk away with. At the end of the day, it really is about that community vibe. Wrapping up that weekend though, let's see everything I just got. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that like button down below and comment on what you thought the best pickup I got was. And if you were at Really Rad Weekend, well, tell me what your favorite pickup was that you got. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will catch you all in the next episode.